Welcome back to yet another episode of Door Kickers 2 Task Force North, where we've been using realistic military tactics and CQB doctrine to play this game. The game is called Door Kickers 2 Task Force North, and it is a top-down, isometric, active pause, tactical planning game where you take an assault team and try to accomplish missions akin to those performed by special operations. This mission is called Market Day, and we are taking a four-man CIA hit squad to rescue a hostage in a contested market environment. That sounds interesting, and you don't yet own a copy of this game, but you would like to. You can purchase the, this game over off of my game store at nexus.gg slash controlledpairsgaming. If you do decide to purchase the game there, it will support the channel directly, and I'm so grateful for each of you that choose to buy the game in that way. And one other note before we get started. I recently released the latest episode of the Controlled Pairs podcast. We were joined by my buddies Karma Cut and Gunbird to talk about what was the most legendary weekend on record. I brought all of my gamer buddies to the East Coast for a wild weekend at the gun range, got an awesome round of training in, videoed all of it, and I talked about it in the podcast in a lot of detail. There's a ton of content on the way from that weekend, but to get a sneak peek, make sure you check out the podcast. It's linked in the description below and on screen right now. Now let's get started with this mission. It's called Market Day. We already alluded to the fact that the requirement here is that we stop executioners from killing hostages, and we have to eliminate all terrorists as a secondary objective. I will say, though, that my primary mission here is going to be to rescue the hostages. The secondary mission is to eliminate the terrorists, but the priority is getting the hostages out. And like we always do, we try to take a look at the environment that we're walking into before we begin our operation so that we know what kind of people we need to bring to accomplish the mission and we know how we might go about taking out the enemy and winning the day. Today, you can see that there is a hostage located right here. The reason we can see him is there's a video camera right here that we're using to surveil the site. We've already identified that hostage, and there's also an executioner right here. And in one minute and 30 seconds, this executioner is going to move to and execute this hostage. There could be other hostages elsewhere on the map, but my priority is going to be getting to this guy as fast as possible. We don't know a lot about the enemy, but we can kind of look at how they have arrayed themselves on the battlefield that we know of and kind of make some assessments on how we think they might behave based off of what they're carrying and how they're behaving. First of all, we're in a marketplace. We can see there's a lot of produce for sale in the street, and you can also hear in the background that there's a crowd noise, kind of ambient noise going. So we know that there are civilians in the area. In fact, you can see a bunch of civilians all through here. So it's a priority as well that we protect the civilian population while rescuing our hostages and eliminating the terrorists. All of that sounds like a really tall order, but the fact that there's so many civilians on the battlefield makes me consider who I bring to the fight and then what I ask them to accomplish also affects how I employ my weapon systems. I'm not going to go throwing hand grenades, for example, if I think that there's a risk of killing hostages or civilians. However, I will always do what I need to to protect the force. This is definitely an urban center. If we start to look at the actual bad guys in the street, we have a grunt insurgent with an AK-47S 7.62 rifle right there. Uh, another individual sitting over here certainly looks like a civilian behind this produce section. And if we look a little bit closer in the actual compound that we are assaulting, you can see I've got the executioner seated over here. He's also got an AK-47S. Next to him is a foreign advisor with an SR-3M 9mm uh, armor-piercing round. So high rate of fire, only a 20-round magazine, uh, but a subgun that's going to be really good in close quarters. And those foreign advisors are very tough bad guys to defeat. Another grunt insurgent in the building. We've got to assume that there's likely other grunt insurgents that we can't see potentially in the room with the hostage himself. We know that the hostage is at a great deal of risk based off the proximity to the enemy and the fact that his execution is imminent. If we look elsewhere, I don't see any other evidence of bad guys, really. If I look in these adjacent structures, there's not like guns or anything like that laying around that I can identify. This very much looks like what the insurgents believe to be a safe house. They're within the population, they don't have a lot of overt fortifications, and they feel comfortable enough to walk around the area with weapons exposed, meaning they don't think that they are necessarily observed. But most notably, perhaps, is this structure over here. So we've got produce on one side, lots of civilians in the street, and then over here we've got a weapons cache or a weapons display. They're selling uh, automatic or semi-automatic grenade launchers, a bunch of pistols, subguns, and AKs. Western style weapons over here, SVDs, Dragonoffs, G3s, all sorts of different weapons over here. So an area the bad guys feel comfortable operating in. Certainly if we see this signature, I expect bad guys to be here. I expect bad guys to be working the counter, potentially also bad guys, who knows, elsewhere on the objective. Now, how do we go about taking down this target? Well, here's kind of my plan. We're not bringing our usual kind of ranger assault force. We're bringing four CIA operatives. I'm bringing two covert or undercover operatives and then two black ops operatives. I'm going to use my undercover operatives here to try to infiltrate all the way behind this objective 
eventually enter and clear this structure, killing the bad guys, getting the hostages, and getting him out safely. I'm going to use the Black Ops guys as my quick reaction force. And they're going to be on standby to move to and support the assault force, the undercover guys, as the action kicks off. And they're also going to assist in escorting the hostage to safety once the gunfight inevitably starts. Now, throughout that entire process and through the gunfight and through the operation, we're going to have to be extremely careful not to commit any civilian casualties. Now, for a special mission, it takes a special kit. So if we look at Bradley here, the only thing he's bringing is a 74U suppressed. He's bringing, um, you know, an AK platform that is suppressed with irons. He can't put a red dot or anything on it, or his concealment loses its covert status, and he's not going to be able to, uh, to infiltrate all the way to the objective. His buddy, Abu Yusuf, is bringing an MP5K also suppressed. He's got a red dot on that. He's got a pakal so he can blend in with the population. And I've given him the lock picking device just in case we encounter any locks up here and we haven't yet compromised ourselves so we can still get in quietly. Now, my Black Ops guys are going to remain concealed in this structure for the most part, and they are coming with a little bit more firepower to bear. Sam here is bringing the 110 suppressed with an LPVO and a Gucci Glock, as well as a ballistic helmet with Nas, because why not, in level four plates, as well as a shoulder fired, should things get completely out of control. And then Zim here is bringing an AK-105 suppressed with a EOTech, a Gucci Glock, and the same complement of Nods and a shoulder fired. Let's go ahead and get this thing started and see exactly how we fare. This is my first go at it. It is a cold look. We try to do these the first time unscathed and with success. Sometimes that works out, sometimes it does not. Here we go. First thing we're gonna do is just establish rear security at our safe house here where we've been doing surveillance with this camera. I'm also gonna put uh, Sam here into this corner so that he's not discovered uh, by anyone that might be deeper out here in the street. We gotta be careful not to get spotted. I don't want Sam to get spotted here, so he's gonna go into cover until they're compromised and they'll pop out and begin pressing. We're also pushing forward with our two undercover guys. See if we can have any luck there. All right, as we go outside, yeah, busy city street, definitely a lot of bad guys moving around. No one has compromised us yet. This dude could become an issue if he turns around and is able to see Sam all the way in here. Sam is pieing that corner pretty good. He is pretty deep back there, but, um, you know, I'm kind of hyper aware of where he might be observed. And if I use his little arrow key, it's really just like this narrow slice where he could potentially be spotted. We'll go ahead and start using our undercover guys to work together. They're going to move in tandem. Bad guy opening the door up here. If we look deeper, this looks like there are still other grunt insurgents in the area. Only have a minute and 25 until the executions begin. We are going to move a little bit more deliberately now. Maintain insecurity this way. Still haven't seen any evidence of other hostages, although I suspect that there very well could be other hostages in the mix. Oh my god, look at all these freaking civilians. Civilians everywhere, more grunt insurgents in the street. This area looks like it's also occupied by insurgents based off of it uh, having that red tent when I highlight these undercover guys. That red tent indicates if I go in that area that I become compromised uh, and they'll begin engaging me based off of my suspicious activity. Um, some more dead space we haven't quite got to back here, so we're gonna continue moving towards where we know the hostage is gonna be located. Interestingly, there is a civilian behind the uh, the weapons cache location. Open breach right here. Still no idea really what's over there. Oh man, it's about to get real. Just a couple dudes going for a stroll, you know? More insurgents outside. Don't mind us, guys. More insurgents inside. Executioner outside the hostage's door. All right, so here's the challenge. We only have a minute until this thing kicks off. Um, I could, so right now, basically what I'm thinking is I need to protect this hostage, right? Um, so I can kill this executioner. I can kill these dudes in the courtyard. Uh, but at some point, 
you know, the bad guys are going to start flooding towards our hostage and trying to kill him. And I would love to be able to use this M110 to shoot long across this axis and take choice shots, like keyhole shots, through this window. Um, there's risk there because, one, I could hit my own assault element as they move through. But it's a precision fire weapon system and a trained dude on it, so I think... I'm willing to accept that risk. However, there's going to be a bunch of civilians in between me and that target. And I don't necessarily believe that we're going to be able to mitigate the risk of those civilian casualties um, whenever things get super weird. So um, a potential risk point there for sure. Just trying to work this angle as best I can to give me the best shot at potentially killing both these dudes. That's my best angle right there. Okay. Um, then the other question is, am I going to be able to kill all three of these guys and both of these guys uh, be before things totally pop off? And I, I honestly just don't know the answer to that question. I really don't. I'm waiting for like the perfect opportunity to try and get as many of these as possible. Looks like this might be it because I've got two guys with their backs to me. Two guys right here. This executioner right there. I think I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Remember, if there's hostages elsewhere, I'm basically forfeiting them as soon as I'm compromised. I'm using suppressed guns to do what I'm about to do, um, but that's still... Um, you know, no way to uh, <laughs> to enter a situation like this. What is interesting, though, is, right, I've got full-size, you know, carbines that are collapsed or otherwise, you know, smaller platforms here concealed underneath my clothing, which makes you think, how are these guys carrying this weapon system? Or more importantly, when they bust this thing out, how are they going to stage it in such a way that they can quickly put it into action if they are carrying it concealed? Well, my buddies over at Neomag, who are sponsors of this video, have a solution to stage your sling in a way similar to these guys might be doing that might benefit you guys who carry a truck gun or play airsoft or like a, just a clean AR-15 strap on your gun at the house. Here's a clip of me explaining exactly how I stage my sling on my Mark 18 using the Neomag Sentry strap. Yeah, so Loose, right? I, I stage my sling right there. Yeah. I still have room for all my other stuff on there. I think it's like kind of personal preference. But even with the slingster, you can do it two ways. You can either go like north-south like this yeah. and then double it back like so. And then stage it with the velcro like that, you know. But what I and you could run the uh, or run the, here in the back. yeah, and then run it over the top there. Yeah. But what I've been doing to reduce the total amount of like excess material is I've been um, staging it like that, so it's like a little bit more compact. Yeah. And then you're grabbing it from the back. So it, it literally just pulls out of that right there. Yep. So now so your device is not in the way. Exactly. Oh, so it's like, this is Velcro. Yeah. It's magnet. No, I hear this shit oh here, shit. Bro. Nice. Okay. So it's just. No Everybody good? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you're good. If you want to grab your own sentry strap, you can follow the link in the description over to the Neomag website. Use the code in the description at checkout and get a discount whenever you grab your very own sentry strap. Thanks to the guys over at Neomag for sponsoring the video. All right, guys, back to the action. Let's see exactly how this thing breaks down. I'm telling my guys they don't need to be quiet anymore. This dude is going to prioritize this target first and then transition to these other two. This guy is going to hit the executioner first immediately followed by this grunt and surgeon. Then he's holding down this door. I'm expecting this executioner to potentially squirt this direction. We're going to hold this angle. Biggest risk here, obviously this guy, because he's facing us, but it's also the unknown coming from this direction. So that's kind of what's on my mind right now. Let's, uh, let's see how this move goes. All right, guns are coming out. Ah, not yet. Because they're facing us now. 47 seconds. Patrol away, bro. 40 seconds. For 29 seconds. All right, this is what we're doing right here. Here we go. All right, three, two, one. Good luck, boys.
We've taken one casualty. Oh, man. We got to hold this angle now. No civilians are down. I think a boo went down. Bradley's still hanging in there. He's got one more grunt surgeon in his face. I see no other hostages yet identified. Sucks we took that casualty. It's kind of the nature of the beast when you're busting out a gun in that sort of situation. Looks like I've got one executioner dead. Let's see if we can hit this guy. All right, we're going to go ahead and make entry. Single man CQB. We know this is dangerous. Open breach. How are we doing on mags? We have 11 rounds. Tack reload from cover real quick. We missed our opportunity. We're going to lose the hostage. Time to say goodbye. Come on. Oh, oh no. Same plan. We're going to try it again. We're going to run it clean. This one's tough, dude. Oh, sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. We know the deal now, though. Get your butts over here quick. We want to preserve as much time as possible. Stage one here. One here. Much better grasp on the situation this time. All right, gats are coming out, yo. Three, two, one, execute. One executioner down. We're gonna hold this. They're here. We've got this hostage isolated from these bad guys for now. We are burning through ammo though. We'll move him into cover a little bit. That grenade's actually coming out. That's a problem. We're going to take cover quickly. I hope that grenade's short. It is. Executioner's moving. Right there. We got to make entry now. Good luck, boys. Holy crap, buddy team CQB. Let's go. Still no civilian casualties looking good. Strong point on the hostage for now. Make it safe. Okay, I think we're looking good now. I am going to push long with one of our boys. How are we doing on ammo? Ooh, you need to stop for attack reload. We're going to pull security for him while he tack reloads. Good to go. That looks like an executioner, potentially. Watching for grenades now, too, based off of us being compromised. Yep, there's an executioner. I'm going to go ahead, I think, and move this DMR into position. I'm a little bit concerned, based off civilians, um, that this may not go our way, but I have trust in this shooter to get it right. <laughs> Civilian injured. But okay. Alright, moving back into cover. Don't shoot. Do we have any other hostages that have popped up? I don't see any. Another executioner moving. I'm going to put our DMR back into position to take those shots. Again, super dangerous, but we don't want to fight a breach here. We're going to be shooting across civilians. This is super, super dangerous. <laughs> One civilian down and an executioner down. Another executioner now moving. Moving back into cover here. Rear security is doing work. Sucks that we took that civilian casualty. 
How are we doing on ammo? 25 rounds, eight rounds. We're going to go ahead and tack reload the AK, keep the MP5K up. So we're doing buddy team reloads here. This is still a point of a threat potentially, so I'm actually going to move into this little piece of cover. This gives us an opportunity to fall back and to watch two breaches, both this breach, which could be pressed from this direction, as well as this breach, which could be pressed from this direction. Strong point in position for now. No longer asking this guy to be quiet. The DMR is doing exactly what we need a DMR to do. Potentially another member of the QRF right here. Maybe it was just this civilian moving. How are we doing on DMR ammo? 12 rounds, still healthy. The big 7.62 or 308 gun. So no reason to get too crazy. All right, I'm going to take a quick peek. We'll pie this externally first. Confirm that's still closed. One long. I'm not sure I'm quite yet ready to um, to give up this position. What I think I'll do is I will take this MP5. I'm going to go ahead and actually hide that weapon. I'm going to ask this dude to move. All right, this gives me much better SA uh, situational awareness here. I'm out of the area that is deemed suspicious based off of that kind of amber shading. Uh, and this dude almost can see me. See, this line is working towards me. That means he's going to discover me shortly. I'm going to break line of sight with him if I can. Another shooter there. I wonder if there's a way for me to get an angle on this shooter. I'm going to relocate because I've got, based off having this guy out here, I've got good situational awareness along this entire long axis, right? Um, so I can use him to hold security here, reposition my DMR to this corner, and get in a long shot fight with a guy who's not ready for it. However, as we move, we also know that this door is left uncovered for now, so we got to pull security on it. And now that I'm here with my buddy, I feel comfortable Go ahead and take an attack reload. I don't want my buddy to have to drop his muzzle as I move past him, so he's going to pull security long. I'm going to take this angle. We'll flip it. Protect flanks as we move. Looks good long. We're going to back back into this corner. Go ahead and press here. Set up this long shot. The shooter is now moving. That's not helpful. He still isn't going to be able to win this long shot fight, though. All right, now I've got this entire axis locked down extremely well with a gun capable of making these tough shots. I have line of sight blocked right now. That's what we're seeing here. See if there's no civilians in the, the uh, frag range of that frag. So we'll go ahead and chuck that. There's risk associated with throwing a frag, especially when I don't have someone covering, but I feel comfortable based off of this dude. It's one more bad guy dead. We can expect a reaction from that. Yep, there it is. One down deep. Another mover here. That's an executioner. We should prioritize him in case there are other hostages. One more up here. Foreign advisor close with Bradley. He's got an AK. Got him. How you doing on ammo, bud? 28 rounds in his mag. Protecting that hostage. You're doing a great job. There's no reason for us to try and push for extract quite yet. The situation's obviously still developing, and we've got the best fields of fire. I am going to go ahead and take my gun out here. It is an MP5K. Not going to have great range, but it's better than nothing. 
All right, I'm going to start working for Xville here. Um, let's go ahead and have you get him. You're safe now. Thank you. That's a problem. Thank goodness. Remember, this area is all uncleared here, uh, based off of Bradley kind of being barricaded. This hallway could, you know, be occupied. So we're watching the hallway, we're watching the corner, but we're pushing up here with Abu Yusuf to clear all this out so we can safely exfil the hostage. I'm actually going to stop, I think, right here. Watch this corner throughout. Right as we approach this doorway, I want to transition to look deep. Deep is clear. Watching this corner now. Looks clear. That gives me the go-ahead based off of having decent fields of fire deep. I can see most of this. I can use this camera to see most of this. So I think it's safe for me to skirt this corner with the hostage. Next safe spot for the hostage is right here. Now we've got rear security with two. Pie this corner with a boo. Looks good. Now, do we have smoke? Funny enough, we're actually able to smoke up from here if Zim can make a Tom Brady-esque throw, and he does. So good smoke. Makes me feel pretty good about bringing our hostage out to right here. We're going to do it on the run, holding rear security the entire time. Smoke co covers this portion right here and everyone that might be able to affect the hostage from that kind of sector of fire, then my deep gun covers the rest of it. All right, now I'm gonna bring a boo across. We're just using bounding overwatch to get out of here. Smoke's starting to dissipate, so that's a period of risk. I'm actually gonna have a boo tuck into cover and get another smoke out. Shooter. We'll have a boo hold what he's got because that's a, a serious shooter. I'm actually going to put a bang like right there. Another shooter here. We've got long security though. I'm going to have a boo run while he's covered. We're, notice how we're deliberately not walking in front of Sam. We're getting around behind him so he's still got open sectors of fire to provide security for a boo as a boo collapses. We keep getting these kind of like flash shots, these flash opportunities to get shots off. Now we can tuck back into cover. The smoke saved our life there. Let's see if we can get one more peek. Indeed we do. Holding this corner. Sam is hurt. But we're doing okay. All right, Sam's got lead. Zim's down here as well. I think what I'm going to do now is Abu has the shortest range gun on the field with this uh, MP5K. So he is going to tell the hostage to, to follow him, and I'm going to lead with guns that I know have better field to fire, better range. Um, so we'll go ahead and push long. Alpha, go. We're working cross coverage here. I'm going to have a boo. Come plug this hole. We'll go ahead and flip and cover deep and work across. All right, now I'm feeling pretty comfortable here. We can go ahead and start working across with Abu up to this point. Hostages in tow. I'm still holding Sam in position. I wouldn't want to leave one guy over here isolated by himself, but given the nature of the security situation, I like having good situational awareness, at least down a couple of these like long slices, these long uh, corridors. All right, now that we're set here, I can kind of collapse this direction, holding security here while we do it. Next threat's going to be this doorway. And now we've just got rear. All right, we're going to hold. Hold.
hold security on this axis right here, push across with Sam. Sam's gonna take the hostage to the next kind of safe area, which I'm calling this. Remember, none of this has been cleared, so it's still extremely dangerous. We could get pushed from the rear here. Alpha, go. So we've got good rear security now. This door's a threat. So now we're bounding across. I'm going to collapse a boot and move to this door. We're going to maintain security here with Zim. All right, this is really kind of the next big threat area. I've got dead space right here, and I've got dead space up here. I've, there's also an open window right here. So, And this is a super narrow corridor, so this is extremely dangerous. What I'm going to do, I think, is uh, I'm going to leave my long gun in rear security because it's my longest axis here. I'm going to get this AK-105 up with a healthy Zim who is uninjured. It's my next most lethal gun on the battlefield. And I'm going to have Zim Alpha, go. come up here and be the two-man for this last little clearance. I'll have him. See, I got an open breach there too, so this is extremely dangerous. He's gonna run the rabbit here. Zim is gonna run the rabbit and pull long. His first priority is gonna be this corner. His second priority will be this door. Risky move here. All right, all angles are covered. We've got good rear security. I'm moving with the hostage to the extraction and collapsing rear security in process. Hostage secured. All right, there's evidently more hostages or more bad guys. The mission is not yet over. I see no hostages, I see no bad guys, but now we're just doing some CQB, um, which, you know, is something that we can handle. We'll pan this, move up with Zim, Have a boot collapse to here with his AK-105. Have Bradley push long into cross coverage here. These guys will go ahead and work and have an open breach deep. Working the open threat first. I do have a window here, but I'm comfortable because I've got long security external, so I don't need to push it too hard. Okay, this all still looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and... Provide a two-man here. Bathroom's clear. Repeat. Run long. Watch the corner. Two to clear the hard corner. We can clear some of this from external. Look at that, Look at that right there. Good long security on this adjacent structure. At the risk of this open breach. Um, all right, let's go ahead and see if we can make entrance into this next structure. Now I'm just hunting for hostages and any bad guys that might still be on the battlefield. Alpha, go. All right, four-man stack. Ooh, standing in front of the breach, not the best course of action. We will move to pull long on the opposite side, and we're going to breach from the door handle side here. We'll set one man in position to take a peek as the door is opened. Most of the room's clear from external. We have an open breach here. We know that's our next threat. All right, can we, we can see pretty good long here as well now. We're going to need... Where was that guy? Dang, what a shot. Two stars, six minutes, 34 seconds. Hell of a run. 
That was a lot of fun. These CIA missions get extremely technical. Hope you guys enjoyed that tactical gameplay. Let's go ahead and watch that replay. Remember, if you guys want to support the channel in a more meaningful way, all you have to do is become a member after you've subscribed to it. And if you like this content, I would appreciate it if you subscribe. Believe it or not, most people who watch my videos haven't yet subscribed, and we are dangerously close to 100,000 subscribers. It's just a number, but it's one that would make me happy. So if you guys want to be a part of it, I invite you to subscribe to the channel for all of your tactical shooter, combat simulation, and milsim needs. I'm Controlled Pairs. This is Door Kickers 2. I'll see you guys in the next one. Check out this replay. Alpha, go.